So uh, last time uh, we were doing some advanced uh, features of the bash uh, of the bash scripting and, and bash bash shell, and we saw group commands and and uh, and shell uh, and subshells. So group commands are those that are not right. My, my keyboard is wrong. Okay, I changed the keyboard. So group commands are included on uh, these uh, curly braces, and all the commands have to be separated by uh, uh, by semicolon. Even the the last command uh, the the last command need, needs a semicolon, and uh, subshells. It is the same thing. There are several commands. Separated by semicolon and are surrounded by parentheses. And uh, the difference between uh, these two is that uh, for executing this command, uh, the bash creates another uh, process or another uh, instance of itself. Uh, this is why it is called uh, subshell. It creates, it starts another shell and executes this, this command in another shell. But uh, these are executed on the same uh, shell as, as the current one or the same instance. Of Bash, and uh, we have seen also an, uh, an example like this before. So the command read is used to read a standard input, and it saves it in uh, in a variable. For example, a variable uh, answer. Now the, the aim with uh, this command is to uh, replace standard input with uh, the output of the command echo. So instead of getting uh, input from uh, standard input, which is uh, the keyboard usually, it will get this one. But uh, this do does not work because uh, of the way that pipe works. Uh, it does not work as expected. Uh, let's try it. And now let's see what is stored in the variable answer. We have seen this example before, nothing. Uh, why? Because this uh, uh, pipe creates a subshell to run this command, uh, and uh, maybe another subshell to run this command. And uh, uh, when this command is executed, this variable uh, gets uh, the correct value, which is this one, but this variable exists in the subshell. And once this command uh, is uh, finished executing, the, the sub Subshell is uh, uh, is deleted or it is exits, and uh, this variable is not available anymore. Now uh, we are uh, printing another value, another variable here, which is uh, the the variable answer in uh, in the current uh, shell, which is a different one from from this one. This is why it does not work. Uh, now. We have seen some uh, ways to work around this problem. For, for example, we can uh, do it like this. Uh, use if doc. Uh, and in this case, it, uh, it works uh, as expected. But uh, another way is uh, to do it like this. So it has worked in this case. Now, what is uh, this strange uh, syntax? Uh, this is uh, called uh, process sub substitution. And uh, here inside the parentheses, we can have a list of commands. And uh, this, uh, the output from these commands uh, is uh, sent to a temporary uh, file, uh, and uh, here we read the data from this temporary file. We can think it like this. So the output of these commands is stored in a temporary file, and then uh, we are just reading data from this 
uh, temporary file. And to see that uh, this is a temporary file, we can we can print this one. We can try to echo this one. So uh, we see that shell is replacing this one uh, with uh, this one, which is which is the file descriptor uh, file descriptor number sixty three, which is a, a file actually. So it is like when we use this one, it is like uh, we are using a file. This is for getting input uh, from some commands. Uh, in order to in order to uh, get the uh, to send some input to some com commands, then uh, we can use uh, we can use a syntax like this. In, the, in this case, this is again like a temporary file, and we can send the data to this file. But uh, uh, the commands that are uh, executed inside uh, this parenthesis uh, get the standard input from uh, from this temporary file. So from some other command, we are sending data to the commands that are uh, executed inside uh, this. Uh, this this parenthesis. This is an uh, example script for uh, process substitution. And uh, the process sub substitution is uh, going on here. Uh, we are listing a directory. So the, per the first uh, argument of this script should be a directory. We are listing a directory. Uh, we are uh, sending the output to tail, which removes the first two lines uh, and uh, this uh, this is like like a file and the the content of this temporary file uh, is is sent as input to this while command so the command while start starts here and and here, and it, it reads the import uh, the imp input from from this temporary file. Now inside this while, uh, we we have a read command here. Uh, this command is uh, reading data into these variables, and of course uh, uh, the data are separated by space, which is the uh, usual uh, or the common the default uh, word separator. So since this is a long listing, ls uh, dash l, uh, it is going to uh, to read the attributes uh, of the files, the links, the owner, etc. And then it just displays them in a different format. So uh, this is a here doc, which uh, has this one as a token and it ends here. And this uh, dash here tells, uh, tells it to, to skip the tabs uh, in front of each line. Is it a tab? Yes, it is a tab. So we execute it with uh, with a directory, so I'm giving the current directory as input, and uh, it does print the files. So this is the command ls, and then we pipe it to it's just 
re remove uh, uh, the first line, I think. It starts from the second line. And then uh, the, the output of this command is sent, is sent to the uh, loop uh, while, uh, which reads the lines one, one by one. So this is uh, read it uh, to the first uh, variable, this to the second, this to the third uh, variable, and so on. And then they are just displayed in a different uh, format. Now, uh, we have seen that when we execute a program in, uh, in Linux, uh, each program that is executed creates a process and we can send signals to a process. And uh, the programs can decide to respond to some signals and do certain actions when they receive these uh, signals. Uh, we can do the same thing in, uh, with bash scripts as well. So, we can tell a bash script to, pro to process certain si signals and to do uh, certain things. For example, uh, we have a, a script here that, uh, that does it. So uh, this command trap uh, gets as per first our argument, uh, the command uh, that should be executed uh, and uh, the rest of arguments are signals. So if uh, this script uh, receives either sig int or sig term, sig term, uh, so this is for interrupting, sig interrupt and sig, uh, sig signal uh, terminate. It will execute uh, this command. Echo, I'm ignoring, just ignores the signal and continues running. And then we have a for loop here, which runs uh, five times. And uh, in each uh, iteration, it sleeps five seconds, just to make it uh, ex its execution long. So le let's try it. Now it is running. Uh, I press Control C, Control C, Control C. And each time that I press Control C, uh, the execution jumps jumps to the command that uh, uh, is specified uh, to be executed when this signal is uh, received. And uh, the, this command just pr prints, uh, I'm ignoring you and does nothing. And the execution of the script continues. This example is almost uh, the same, but uh, in this case, we are using a function to uh, respond to a signal. So in this case, for SIG interrupt, uh, when SIG interrupt is received, then we call this function, exit on, on signal SIG int. And when uh, this signal is received, then uh, this function is called. And these functions are defined here. So uh, we first output a message to the standard error, and then uh, we exit uh, normally with the zero uh, exit code. And uh, the same thing with the other function, we output a message to the standard error, because messages usually are outputted to the standard error, not to the standard output. To standard output uh, are outputted the, uh, the result of calculations, for example, or the result of the script. And then we exit uh, normally. And then we run the same uh, loop again. So this is more convenient uh, than the previous example because it is difficult to include uh, in, uh, it is difficult to in include in a double quoted string, a long list of uh, commands. For example, here we have two commands, but uh, there can be several uh, commands.
and the script is interrupted. So in this case, in this case, we are not ignoring the signal, but we interrupt the script. But we interrupt the script after we do some some uh, housekeeping, for example. Bash also has uh, support for asynchronous e execution. So inside the script, we can start uh, another uh, script or another command, which can run in parallel with uh, uh, with uh, the current script, and they can uh, also communicate with each other. So we have two uh, scripts. To test this case, async child and uh, async uh, asynchronous parent. Uh, let, let's see the async asynchronous child first. So this is a very simple uh, script. Uh, it gives a message child uh, child is running initially, and then sleeps five seconds, and then uh, another message. Child, child is done exiting. And now the asynchronous parent. So here we print a message uh, parent uh, starting, and then uh, we launch the child script. Parent uh, launching a child script. Here we launch the child script, and then uh, we append this. Uh, Ampersand at the end, which makes it to run uh, uh, in parallel with this script. So the execution of this script will not stop until uh, this returns, but it will continue running uh, at the same time as, as this script in, in parallel. And uh, this special variable uh, dollar uh, exclamation contains the, the process ID of the last uh, command that is executed uh, in background with ampersand. And we, we save this uh, process ID to this variable feed process ID. And then uh, the script continues to execute. Parent child uh, with this process ID uh, is launched. And then uh, parent continuing, and then uh, it is slipping two seconds. So uh, the, the child is uh, lasting five seconds because it, it has a slip five command. Uh, but uh, here we slip two seconds and then we cut before the child is uh, terminated. And then uh, we wait uh, until the child is uh, terminated with, with this command, wait, and then the process ID. We, we wait for this script to be uh, uh, finished or to be executed, and then we continue execution. So this is kind of uh, synchronization between the two uh, scripts. Uh, the parent script is waiting for the child uh, to finish, and then uh, it continues uh, to execute. And then the message child is finished, continuing, parent is done, exiting. So we just need to call this one, the async parent, and it will uh, call uh, the async child. The so child is running, parent uh, pausing to wait for the child to finish. And then after the child is finished, uh, child is done. It gives this mes message after it is done. And when the uh, child is finished, uh, the parent continues the execution. Now, another subject is uh, named pipes. So we have seen pipes like this. So we, here we have a command, and then we have a pipe, and the output of this command is sent as input to, to this command. We set as in uh, put to this command. So this is an uh, implicit uh, pipe. 
uh, or nameless uh, pipe. But uh, we can also create a pipe with a name, uh, like uh, this one. Uh, so we use the command make hippo, first in, first out. So the pipe is like a first in, first out uh, uh, structure. Then we uh, list uh, this file uh, with the name pipe, we see this uh, P uh, option at, uh, at the attributes or the P attribute. And uh, th this tells us that uh, this is a pipe. Uh, it is a named pipe. Now, the, the way that we use this uh, name pipe is that we send da data to it like we would send da data to a file. And then we read data from the pipe the same way that we would read uh, data from a file. So it is like, uh, like a file, actually, but uh, it is a file uh, maybe in, in memory or a temporary file. It depends how the uh, operating system handles it. So le let's see an example. So I'm executing this command and I'm sending the output of it to, to this pipe one file. And then I'm also adding an ampersand, which means that this command will uh, run in the background uh, so that we can give another command uh, in the prompt. So we don't see any output yet because this command is sending data to this, uh, to this pipe and the pipe is uh, the buffer of the pipe is built in and then it sends a message to the command that stop uh, uh, i am full i cannot receive any more data and then the command uh, waits until the but uh, the buffer of the pipe can receive more data uh, and now we need another command to read to read data from the buffer of this uh, pipe or from this file and it is uh, for example the command uh, yes is uh, reading data from pipe one. And now it displays the data, data that it receives. And we also see that uh, at the same time, uh, the, this command LSL is also uh, finished because it uh, sends all the data that it has to send and then it is done. So uh, in this case, these two commands that we have used are uh, almost the same as this one, but with a small difference. Uh, we can also uh, run this command in a different uh, tab or in, uh, in a different terminal. For example, So it is uh, still running. It is uh, until this command is finished because it is not finished yet. Let's go to the first uh, tab. And then now we, we read data from this pipe. It is done. And we also see that this command now is uh, terminated. And the another so this is one difference that uh, they can be executed in, in different uh, terminals or in different uh, tabs. Another difference is that this command less is executed in a subshell, but uh, this command less here is uh, executed in the same uh, in the same uh, shell uh, as this command. And uh, this difference is important in, in some cases. Uh, for example, in the case of read that we saw uh, above. So we, we saw that this pipe doesn't work. 
if we use read with uh, the, the normal pipe, it doesn't work. But if uh, we do it with a uh, named pipe like this, and then In this case, it works because uh, this read command is ex executed in the same uh, shell. It is not executed in the in a sub shell, and so uh, the value that it assigns to this uh, variable uh, can can be uh, used in this shell. Let's see another example with uh, a pipe. This is an infinite loop, while true, true. Uh, we are uh, reading data from uh, pipe one line by line. So we read the first line and then the second line and so on from pipe one. And then we output uh, the uh, data that we read. This is the end of while and then we are running it in the background so that we can uh, continue giving up, giving other commands. And now it is not printing anything because there is, there is nothing to read, uh, to read from pipe one. But as soon as we send something to uh, pipe one, it will read it and it will print it. For example, we send this line to pipe one. And now this is the this line is printed by uh, this command that is run, running in the background. Uh, as soon as it reads something, it prints it uh, with it in this format. You set and then line. Now, since this is an infinite loop, it is uh, running uh, infinitely in the background. How do we stop it? Uh, first of all, we uh, bring it forth in the background with the command uh, foreground. Foreground, now uh, this is continue, uh, it is uh, still continuing to execute, but in the foreground. And now we can stop it with uh, control C. And uh, to remove a, a, a pipe, we remove it uh, the same way that we would uh, remove a file. So uh, we are done with the advanced topics uh, in the in the bus shell. Now let, let's see some uh, uh, the programs that we or the solutions of the assignments. So the first assignment was uh, to get all the URLs from a given uh, web page. And uh, we have this script here, get URLs, that does this job. So First, it is getting the page uh, as an argument. So the first ar argument is stored in this variable page, and then it checks whether it is empty or not. If it is empty, it prints the usage. 
and exit with an error uh, code. And then uh, we use wget to download the page. And then uh, we use a grep to extract uh, all the anchor uh, or the, the links or, or all the links. And then we, from each link, we extract the, uh, this attribute uh, href. And then we exclude this uh, mail tool, and then we do some uh, processing, uh, remove these double quotes, and uh, remove also this uh, href, and it uh, gives us a list of URLs. So let's, let's try. So use it. Uh, it uh, needs an HTML uh, page or HTML URL. I'm giving this URL as an argument. And it outputs all the uh, links inside the, uh, the given page, inside this page. Uh, let's, uh, le let's try to do it uh, step by step. So we have this uh, command wget first uh, with the URL and this queue is uh, quiet, uh, not to output any extra uh, information about the progress. And this option O, capital O is for output. We have to send the output and we add this to send the output to the standard output, uh, not to a file. Otherwise, uh, it, uh, we, can, we can write a file name here, but we don't want to send output to a file, but we want to send output to the standard output. And in this case, we use this uh, minus or dash. And this can be uh, combined like this, these options. So what do we get? We get an HTML page uh, as an output. So we apply this so this I is for insensitive, case insensitive. So it doesn't matter whether, whether this is a lowercase or uppercase A, it will match. And uh, this option capital E is for extended uh, regular expression. So it is using extended regular expressions with, uh, without extended if the regular expressions were not extended, then maybe we have to escape this one and uh, this one. Uh, and uh, this O means that it will output only the matching part of the lines. It will not output the, the whole la line, which is the default uh, behavior of grep. So with this option O, we output only the matching part. Uh, something wrong. Oh, uh, this W get here, and we send the output of uh, W get to grep. So we see that we extract uh, all the uh, tags A, which contain a link. And now from each of them, we will extract the, the attribute uh, href. So we send the output to this next uh, graph. This is uh, again uh, extended regular expression. This is to output only the matching uh, part of the line. And uh, here we, we have a regular expression uh, for matching the part. So it matches each ref 
equal and then uh, this is an optional uh, double quote uh, it is optional because it, it has this uh, question mark again here we close with an optional uh, double quote it can have a uh, double quote or not and then the part in the parenthesis uh, is uh, one or more characters like this and the characters like this are everything different from a double quote so uh, we start with a double quote then we match everything different from a double quote and then uh, we match another double quote uh, at the end so let's see uh, it is extracting uh, this href attribute now to get the links we need to delete this uh, double quotes and to delete uh, this part and what remains will be the will be the the link so uh, we send uh, but actually you uh, you see that this mail too is not a link so we we have to exclude this one so uh, this regular expression is to to exclude those, those cases so this minus v uh, changes the sense of gap it does not print the lines that match but uh, it prints the lines that uh, do not match so all the lines that match this one uh, are not printed or are not uh, are filtered are fil filtered out and then Uh, we have an expression here which uh, substitutes uh, this double quote uh, with nothing and it do does it globally so it will substitute both the beginning and the end uh, double quote and then we substitute this href equal with uh, nothing so basically we de delete it and this uh, this gives us the the result Now, the next assignment is uh, to get all the words uh, from a web page. Actually, it returns uh, 100 uh, most frequently used words inside the web page. So, the assignment or the requirement is to return uh, 100 most frequently used words inside the web page so again we store it to the url of the page in this variable we download the uh, the content the html content of the page and then uh, we pass it to a series of commands uh, this translates new lines to empty space so it, it makes it a, uh, a single big line the content of the file uh, why does it do so because some uh, uh, because we want to delete all the tags and some tags uh, may be broken and if they are broken so half of the tag in one line and half of, uh, of the tag in the next line then uh, the, uh, this set will not uh, match it uh so we want to match uh, the full tags and to delete all the tags so uh here we start with this one and everything uh different from a closing tag and then a closing tag and we replace it with an empty space so we we basically uh, basically delete all the tags and uh, here we also delete all the uh Uh, how how they are called that start with an ampersand and then uh, special characters uh, and they end with a semicolon so we delete them as well uh, actually we, we don't delete them but we replace them with an uh, empty line and then this tr or translate uh, command uh, this c is for compact i think uh, compact means that it will replace uh, multiple occur occurrences of a string with uh, a single uh, uh, multiple occurrences of a character with a single character for example if there are multiple spaces uh, one after in another they will be re replaced with a single space 
and uh, it will replace all the characters that do not match this uh, uh, these characters. So if a character does not match uh, any of the characters in this list, which are all the uppercase and lowercase letters, including a uh, quote, a single quote, uh, they will be replaced by uh, a new line. And then we convert all uppercase to lowercase. Uh, then we sort them. Uh, and then we count this uh, Unix C after they are sorted, uh, it will display a count uh, along the, the word or the line. Uh, and then we get uh, the result that, that we want. Uh, let, let's do it in, interactively. First of all, let, let's try. So it needs a URL. I'm using uh, this page from uh, Wikipedia. So the, it is printing uh, 100 the most frequently used uh, words. So let, let's count how many words are there. So there are 100 uh, words as a result. So this will just download the HTML content of the page. And then uh, we translate all new lines to uh, empty spaces. So it will become a big line. Everything will be like a big line, big line. Uh, no, again. So all the content of the page will be now uh, a single big line. And then we replace all, all the tags, uh, erase all the tags and leave only the content. Replace uh, also the this. delete uh, all the special uh, characters uh, and keep only the alphabetic characters, including the uh, the comma. And we actually don't delete them, but we replace them with uh, with a new line. And so everything is broken. So even a space is replaced with a new line. So And then uh, we can convert everything to lowercase. And then uh, we sort, and then count the repeated words, the words that are repeated. Oops.
So you see that, for example, this A uh, is very uh, repeated 180 times. And now we need to order according to the first column because uh, in the descending order, because we need the most frequently used words. So uh, we, we sort by the first uh, field, uh, numeric sort and reverse sorting from the biggest to the smallest. And then, uh, we saw sort by the second uh, field. And now from this output, we need to get only the first uh, 100 lines. And we do we can do it with a with a set command. We can also do it with head, for example. But in this case, uh, it is used uh, set. So after 100 uh, lines, uh, the queue command quit uh, will stop uh, processing further. So it will print only the first 100 uh, 100 lines. And uh, now we need we need to remove this uh, first column and keep only the first uh, the the second uh, column, which is which is the words. And we do it by replacing first all the spaces, uh, removing all the spaces, all the spaces at the beginning. So all the spaces uh, of the, at the beginning of the file, we remove them and then uh, we use cut to get the second field. And it will give us the required uh, result. The next uh, assignment uh, is Fibonacci. So uh, we need to uh, write a script that calculates uh, the Fibonacci numbers using an iterative algorithm. So we get, we get the first argument and store it to N. We, uh, we, uh, it, we will calculate for example, if the first argument is five, we will calculate the fifth uh, Fibonacci number. If there is if no argument is given, then we print a usage uh, message and stop. Now, uh, if uh, the if the number of uh, if the uh, given number is zero, if we want the zero uh, in the zeroth place, the Fibonacci number that is uh, at the zeroth place of the first Fibonacci number, then we just uh, print zero. Uh, for the second uh, Fibonacci number, we just print one. And then for the rest, uh, we do this. Uh, initialize to zero and one, and then we repeat n times uh, this loop. Uh, calculate the next uh, Fibonacci number by uh, summing up the previ two previous uh, ones. Then we we uh, shift F0 to F1 and uh, we shift F1 to, uh, to the next Fibonacci number and we repeat this step. At the end, we will have the Fibonacci number in this uh, variable.
So with this loop, we get the first 10 uh, Fibonacci numbers from zero to 10, calculate uh, Fibonacci number I. The next uh, assignment is, is annoying. Uh, we need to write that uh, gives the moves to solve uh, Hanoi uh, towers. So we are using a function, uh, solve Hanoi, and uh, it is getting three arguments, uh, four arguments actually. So uh, the first argument is the number of uh, disks. Uh, the second uh, argument is the source uh, tower, uh, the destination tower, and the auxiliary uh, tower, uh, the last argument. And uh, if number of disks is uh, greater than zero, greater than zero, do this one. Otherwise, uh, do nothing and uh, the function and the recursion ends. So uh, we call the same function. Uh, this is a recursive call, uh, solve annoy uh, with uh, disks minus one. So we move the, we leave only the, the bottom uh, disk and remove the rest one from the source to auxiliary using the destination tower as auxiliary in this case. And uh, then we move the last or the bottom uh, disk from source to destination and then we do the reverse uh, move of this. Uh, so we call again, solve annoy, uh, this move disk, disk minus one from auxiliary to destination using uh, the source tower as uh, auxiliary. Uh, then when the script starts executing, it, uh, it is uh, asking uh, towers of annoy how many disks, and then we give the number of disks. And then uh, it keeps, uh, this uh, number of moves, uh, it, it, ca it keeps count of number of moves and here we increment for each move that we do, we increment the number of moves. And then it calls the function solve annoy with the number of this and then from source this to destination uh, using auxiliary. And then it uh, outputs a message about the number of uh, movements that uh, were used. How many disks? One. So move from source to destination and it is done. Two. Move from source, uh, move the top disk from source to auxiliary, move the top disk from source to uh, destination and then from auxiliary to destination. Three. And uh, if uh, we have five disks, then we uh, we need to make 31 moves. The, ne the next assignment is actually the, the most difficult one. It is uh, almost like a small project. And uh, it is uh, required or the requirement is to write a script that uh, gets all the words from a uh, web page, and then uh, it uh, gets all. It also follows the the links uh, that are inside this web uh, page and uh, gets all downloads also the content of the of those pages and extracts all the words. And uh, at the end, it will collect all the words uh, and it will create a list of words. So the aim is to, to create a list of words. And it is done by uh, crawling uh, the web, starting from a certain web page. And, uh, and th this is the script that uh, does it. So first of all, uh, this check uh, function uh, checks that we have the required dependencies because we are using Linux and W3M. And so 
if uh, this does not exist, then we uh, output a message to the standard uh, output and exit with an error message. And uh, we also check that uh, there is an argument. So this requires the URL of the starting page uh, as an argument. And uh, so here we check that uh, we have such an argument. Otherwise, we uh, print the, the usage and exit with an error code. And you see that we are using here the group commands. And we are also using uh, the, uh, this operator, which is a compact uh, if, if else. So uh, if, uh, if this is true, then do this one as well. Uh, if uh, this is false or if this fails, then uh, do this one. And we also uh, run, we uh, have an infinite uh, loop inside the, the main uh, function uh, of, of this script. And we don't want it to run infinitely, but uh, we give a runtime in seconds and uh, we do this by uh, starting a timer. So this, this function start timer uh, starts a timer. And uh, here again, we have uh, group commands. And these commands are executed. And at the end of this, we uh, append an ampersand. And this makes it to execute in the ground or kind of uh, in, in parallel with uh, this script. So when we call this function, uh, these commands will execute in parallel with uh, with this script. Uh, this is like a no-name function or like a lambda function. So this function will be executed. And inside this function, we have a sleep uh, this many seconds. And uh, when the time, the sleep time is expired, then uh, we uh, show this message, timeout. Then we find out the number of words collected. And uh, the words, the collected words are in this file. So we count the lines of this file. We output the number of files collected, and then we kill uh, this uh, script. This special variable dollar dollar uh, contains the process ID of uh, this script. So we send the message nine, kill nine to the script to terminate it. And this is how the script uh, ends. And uh, then we have these auxiliary functions, uh, get URLs and get words. Uh, these are similar to the previous uh, assignments that we have done, but we are using a different method uh, in, in this case. So we are using this Linux uh, command, which is used to, uh, which is a, a, te a terminal browser. We can browse web pages in a terminal, but it also has some useful uh, options uh to get the content of, of that page and we process it a little bit to uh, just extract extract the urls and also to get the words we are using this w3m uh, and uh, process it a bit to extract all the words in a given uh web page in, in this uh url and this uh, is like the old uh, method that we used in the assignment, but we are actually using uh, this uh, function, get, get words. And then the, the main function of, of the script. And uh, at the end, we are calling the main function, uh, passing it all the arguments that uh, are passed to the script itself. Now, uh, the, the main function, uh, we have an infinite loop. Uh, while true, and we also have this uh, file uh, to do dot text, which contains a list of URLs that uh, we are going to process, or we are to process that we are to process. And there, there is also uh, a file done dot text, which uh, keeps a list of URLs that are uh, already processed. And there is also this uh, words.txt, uh, which contains a list of the words that we have collected already. And uh, initially, we start by uh, saving the given URL, which is passed as argument to the script, 
to this file. It contains only one line at this point, uh, which is uh, the, ur the URL that is uh, given. And then uh, inside the loop, we do this. We pop the top, top URL from the uh, file to do.txt. And we do, uh, we get it using head one, the first line, and then we remove the first line with this command. So one D delete the first, uh, de delete the first line from this uh, file. Then uh, we check that the URL that we just received in this uh, variable uh, is not already processed. And we check it by uh, looking at the file done.txt. If it uh, exists in this file, then we have already processed it. So we don't continue uh, the other steps uh, in the loop and we start from the beginning. So we skip the, the rest of the steps. Other, otherwise we uh, echo the URL and uh, keep, keep on uh, processing it. Now the processing that we do is that we extract the links from uh, the page that uh, is downloaded from the page of this URL and we extract these links with this function get URL and we append them to uh, the file to do uh, dot text and uh, they will they are going to be processed later when we get the top uh, URL from the to do then they uh, eventually will process these uh, URLs as, as well and uh, the next processing that we do is that we extract all the words from uh, from this page and we do it with this function get words and we append all the words to this file uh, words.txt it already has some a list of words in it so we are appending to the existing uh, list and uh, actually we, we keep this file sorted so uh, after we append uh, some files we resort it again sort it again with uh, the sort command and this u is unique uh, so uh, if there are uh, several identical lines only one line uh, of them is is kept And then uh, after processing this URL, we append it to the file uh, done.txt so that we don't process it uh, again uh, if we uh, get it again from uh, this to do file. So uh, le let's see how it works. Uh, let me install quickly this W3M. We are almost done, just one minute or so. Let's try it again. Now uh, it requires a URL. So we have this one, uh, let's use this one. So it, it is printing the URLs that is uh, already uh, processed. And timeout expires because uh, it is allowed to work only for 10 seconds and the uh, number of collected words is uh, this one. And we can see in the In this file, the collected words. And uh, let's actually count them. It's the same. Now, if uh, we want to allow the script to work more than uh, 10 seconds, uh, we have to edit it actually. And so let's make it 100 seconds, for example. And start it again. So 
so it, it is taking longer this time almost one uh, minute and, and a half Okay, the timeout is skipped. And the number of collected words this time is uh, this one. Let's count them again. Actually, we, we see that uh, the actual number of words is a bit uh, a little bit higher. Why? Because uh, here at uh, the timer, uh, we output uh, uh, this message and then uh, we count the number of words and then uh, we echo and then uh, we at, at this point we kill the program so uh, between uh, this time and this time probably uh, one or two more pages have been uh, processed and so uh, the number reported by by this is, is not 100% uh, correct but it, it is uh, close it is very close so let, let's see if there are any questions. So Diego says, uh, why, uh, why we are using uh, this? Uh, actually, this one is uh, like a file. We have some commands uh, inside here. We have some commands. And uh, this command uh, run in a subshell. Be because of this, uh, uh, because of this parenthesis, they run in, in a subshell. And because we uh, are adding this character in front, uh, the shell uh, treat, uh, uh, handles it like, like a file. The, the output that is produced by these commands uh, is handled like a temp temporary file. And so uh, we want to, uh, to read from this file. Uh, that's why uh, we have uh, this reading uh, uh, redirector. So instead of reading from uh, from standard input, which is the keyboard, we are uh, actually uh, reading from from this file. Uh, it is like it behaves like a file. And then if uh, we want to send some output to the commands that are running inside inside this uh, parenthesis, then we use uh, this uh, syntax. And in this case. It makes sense to send data to this file uh, with an operator like this, the direct operator like this. I I hope that uh, I explained it. Uh, named pipe uh, are FIFO or FILO. It is first in, first out. Uh, not first in, last out. First, first uh, in, uh, last out is uh, a stack, but they are like a queue. So uh, a pipe is like a queue. Uh, the one that uh, gets to the queue first is uh, served first or is processed first. So it is first in, first out. Uh, Hansas is only for regular expression. I'm not sure what, uh, what is the context of, of this question. Uh, how to get colored output? Again, uh, I'm not sure about the context of, of the question, but uh, usually, usually, if uh, we use ls, uh, we can add the option color bars uh, equal true or 
if it is auto, sometimes it will print color output, sometimes it, it does not print with this option. Uh, recursion. Uh, it is, Hamza, it is uh, written like, oops, where? It is written like this, recursion. Okay, you are uh, welcome, Andreas. It is a pleasure for me, and uh, I would like to thank uh, you as well that uh, participated from the first uh, uh, lesson up to the last, and Paolo and Diego as well, and Anton. Uh, it has been a pleasure for me as well to organize this uh, le lecture and to collaborate with you. So uh, I'm stopping the recording now. <laughs>